Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Britt brings it home. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Britt and I do videos to help you create a healthy and organized home. And in today's video, I am deep cleaning and organizing my dining room and sharing lots of tips and hopefully motivating you and inspiring you to go and do the same. This is one of my jobs for July on my deep cleaning schedule for the home, which I will link to down below if you want to go print it off and follow it along with me. So thankfully the dining room is not a huge room. There's not tons and tons to organize here. It's going to be more so cleaning than organizing, but I have the hutch here that I'm going to be organizing the drawers in. I have my kids art cart over there that definitely needs to be reorganized and we're going to clean the table and the floors and everything else. <laughs> I homeschool my boys and this is the room that we use for our homeschooling. And so it's multi-purpose. It's used for homeschool and art projects slash eating. So I'm all about making sure that the room is functional. It's not just, you know, a pretty decorative room that we use occasionally when guests come over. This is a functional space that we use daily. So I want to make sure that it is organized in a way that fits our needs. Whether you use your dining room for just eating or if you use it for other purposes as well, hopefully this video will give you some motivation to go and organize it however you need to to fit your family's needs. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you're notified when I come out with the next video. I'd love to have you here in our community and get to know you and how I can better help you. All right, so let's get to cleaning. Okay, so this is my kids' art cart where we keep their art supplies, obviously. So we have like pencils, colored pencils, crayons, markers, paint, paper, all kinds of things that we use in homeschool for projects and just other random art projects whenever they want to do one. So the first thing that I'm doing in my dining room organization is organizing and cleaning out this art cart because like this is our dining room. This is where, you know, guests see when they come to our home and we eat around the table. And so they see this art cart sitting there in the corner and so I don't want it to be super messy and disorganized and it definitely has gotten messy. It was in some major need of some cleaning out and some reorganization and it's time to give my boys some reminders of where things go and to put things you know where they go when they're done using the art supplies so that we can keep it organized and not have to do like a major reorganization every month or so. So I'm going one shelf on here at a time and I'm getting everything off the shelf and I'm cleaning it with my Branch Basics all purpose cleaner and a microfiber cloth. And for the organization, I'm starting with the top shelf where we have like all of the writing tools, all the pencils, color pencils, crayons, all that stuff. So I'm like clearing out each little bucket, each little container and cleaning it well with my Branch Basics All Purpose Cleaner. We have so many crayons. And so like I'm not keeping all of them if they are, you know, broken, just little bits of crayons, I'm throwing them out. I'm only keeping crayons that will fit in these two little tins and so I'm putting away the ones that are like whole crayons and that are what I think is the best brand that works the best which is Crayola so like the cheaper ones that don't really color as well I'm getting rid of I went through and sharpened all the pencils our pencil sharpener just bit the dust so I just got this new little pencil sharpener and so I sharpened all the pencils and put them away in another one of those little tins which by the way I got those little tins at Target in the dollar section 
However, that was a few years ago, so they probably don't have them there anymore, but that's where I got them. And then I put the paint away in this other little white container. And if any of the jars of paint were like dried up or like almost out, hardly anything left in them, then I threw them out. So I only kept the little jars of paint that had paint in them and that were in good condition, weren't dried out. And so all those pencils, color pencils, crayons, each had their own separate container. The paint had its own container. So the boys know where each thing is. I did show them where we put each kind of writing tool so that they know where it goes when they're done using it. I'll definitely be checking every once in a while to make sure that they are keeping up with it and putting things where they go. So that shelf is done. On to the next shelf where we keep glue, our hot glue gun and glue sticks. There's little bits of paper in there, little trash, little foam, pom-poms, sequins, all kinds of little art supplies. So I'm doing the same thing. I got everything off of the shelf, threw the trash away that was in there for some reason. And then I wiped down the shelf and then I'm just going through sorting things and organizing each type of item them into different containers. So I put scissors and a hole puncher in one of those little tins and then I put glue sticks both like the regular glue sticks and hot glue gun sticks in one container and then I also have these little gray containers that I also got from Target and that was not in the dollar section that was in like the regular organization stuff and so that may be available still. I will check and if it is I will put the link to that down below. So I put the little pom pom-poms in one of those and I put sequins in another one. I have a little clear container to put googly eyes in. I have that little white basket that I put like just little pieces of like scrap paper but if they're like all torn up and not in good condition I threw them away and then I have another one of those little gray containers where I keep erasers those big pink erasers. And then on to the third shelf where we have stickers and ribbon. So again, I got all that stuff out of there, wiped down the shelf with my branch basics and cloth. And then I went through the ribbon first, cleaned out the little container that it was in, and then made sure all the spools of ribbon were all wound up and looking good, nice and neat. And then stood them up vertically. That way I can see all the different types of ribbon that we have. And then same thing with the stickers. I I emptied that little basket out and wiped it down and then made sure to only put back in there the stickers that I thought that we would actually use again if they weren't not in good condition or they're not something that I think the boys would actually ever use then I got rid of them so those went back on the shelf and then it was time for the fourth shelf <music> On this shelf we keep yarn and other small little art materials like feathers and those fuzzy pipe cleaners. This shelf wasn't too bad, wasn't too messy, but I did take everything out, wipe it down, and then just make sure there was no trash in there, make sure the spools of yarn were wound up and the strings weren't hanging out all over the place and then I just put them back in there neatly. And so that is it for the art cart. And so now I'm moving on to the hutch. And as you can see, I do have some of our school curriculum on that bottom shelf there. This is stuff I've recently gotten in the mail that I ordered for our next school year. I haven't put it away yet because I currently don't have room to put it away, but once I got everything reorganized, I did have room to put those away where they go. But I'm starting with these shelves in this glass portion. So same thing with the art cart. I started by taking 
everything off the shelves, clearing this section and then cleaning it. And I started with cleaning the wood part and I redid this hut. It is oak and so it was that, you know, brown, regular wood color and I sanded it and painted it. So that was a fun project. I would love to know if you have redone a piece of furniture in your home as well and what it was. I've redone a few things like this and it's a lot of fun and I definitely wanna do more in the future. So I'm cleaning it with my homemade furniture polish, which the recipe's coming up, so stay tuned in this video. You'll see it in a little bit what I use to make this, but it's super gentle and not harsh and it's great for using on wood furniture. So I just spray a little bit and wipe it down with my microfiber cloth. And my hutch has a lot of glass on it. And so I'm cleaning all of that now. And for glass cleaner, I use this Ecos cleaner that is vinegar based. And so it doesn't have ammonia in it. It's not harmful, doesn't contribute to allergies and asthma and hormonal imbalance that a lot of other household cleaners can cause. So this is again, very safe and non-toxic. And so I just spray that and I would love to say that I use a microfiber cloth. However, I just don't find that works as well. And so I do use paper towels to clean the mirrors. And I know that is, you know, kind of wasteful and hopefully in the future I can find a towel that works well with cleaning glass without streaking. So I use paper towels. I did switch over to using these that are bleach free. I get them from Grove Collaborative. I get a lot of stuff from Grove Collaborative, like toilet paper, tissues, paper towels, things that are like made of bamboo and sustainable and eco-friendly and non-toxic. So I'll put the link to those down below if you want to check Grove Collaborative out. If you haven't tried them yet, it's awesome. I will say that just because something is on a clean site like Grove Collaborative, that doesn't mean that everything on it is clean and non-toxic. Still definitely look at the ingredients and look products up on apps. I use the EWG app and also the Think Dirty app to see if products are safe or not. Both of those rank things and you know if it's in the green if it's like a zero one or two or if it's an a then it's good but if it's in the red if it's a 10 or like a d or an f then don't get it always try to get things with a good score that have good clean ingredients that aren't going to cause harm to you and your family if this is the first video you've seen on my channel i am all about clean non-toxic living i have dealt with eczema and hormonal imbalance Challenge, which both of those can be aggravated by or caused by products that we use on our body and in our home, candles, those room fresheners and additives and food that we eat. And so I am very careful about what I use on my body and in my home and what I eat. I always look at the ingredients and make sure that it is clean and doesn't have harmful chemicals. I have learned how to heal my eczema. My hormones are getting back in balance. I'm feeling so much better and so here on this channel I do share tips for not just cleaning and organizing I'm not just telling you how to clean and organize but I'm also sharing how to do it in a way that is safe and how you can live a healthy life if you suffer from eczema too I have a whole playlist of videos on how I healed my eczema and how you can heal your eczema naturally. Throughout the past few years, I've actually become so interested in health and wellness and healing myself and helping educate others so that they can live healthy lives and help prevent disease. So I am actually working towards becoming a certified holistic health coach. Besides just cleaning and organizing, I also do videos about health and wellness and just helping you to live a healthy life and create a healthy home for your family so that you can feel your best, you can do what you can to prevent disease and hormone imbalance and all these things that are like very common in our world today. So push that subscribe button and follow along if you're interested in those things and want to find out more about these things also.
also in the bottom of our hutch, this is where we keep our homeschool stuff. And we have these two cabinets, one small one and this one large one. And I did have all of our homeschool stuff in the small cabinet for some reason. By the way, this past year, 2020, 2021 was our first year of homeschool. And so I didn't know exactly what to expect going into it, but now I know a little bit more. You can watch my 10 lessons I learned from my first year of homeschool. If you wanna know the lessons I learned from my first year of homeschool, that might help you out if you are trying to decide if you should homeschool or not and kind of what to expect your first year and maybe some lessons that you can learn before you go into it. So anyways, I am switching all of our homeschool stuff over to the larger cabinet and putting the stuff that I had in the larger one and the smaller one. So yeah, I'm going through and getting rid of some trash paper, scrap paper that was in here before. And then I'm sorting my two boys books. And then on the top shelf, I'm putting my youngest son, Jace's books. And then right below that on the bottom shelf, I'm putting my oldest son, Jackson's books. And I am gonna be labeling them with my label maker in a little bit. And then on the top middle, I'm putting paper, color paper and lined paper for them both to use when they need to. And then under that, I have these notebooks. And this is where I kept Jackson's books last year. I tore the pages out of his books and they were already hole punched, thank goodness. And so I just put those pages into the binders just to make it easy to to open up to and do whatever pages he needed to do for that day. So I still have these. I'm probably gonna put his new books for the coming school year in these binders, but there still are a few things for him to finish in some of these books. And so he's gonna keep on working on some of this stuff throughout the summer. Just do a few pages here and there until he's totally done with everything from these books and we can put his new books in the binders. And then on the far right side, I have some manipulatives. So on the top, I have some ELA stuff. So that's English language arts, reading, writing, phonics, phonemic awareness, that kind of stuff. And so I have these little readers that actually used to be Jackson's and I'm gonna be using them with Jace this school year. And then I have like letter flash cards and things like that. And then on the bottom, I have some math manipulatives. So I have math, like addition and subtraction flashcards. And I have these jars and beans that we use for place value. We have the like thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones houses. And then I just have this blow up globe for geography that will blow up when we need to use it. So that's it for our homeschool shelves. Since last time. Where'd you go? What's the score? Did you find what you were looking for? I never see you anymore. I can't remember what we did that day. We were blowing up steam in Paris, but I wanted to stay because I know how it felt. Okay, so now I'm just making my homemade furniture polish. What I use to dust my furniture and it is perfectly safe on my wood furniture. Of course, I'm not promising it's gonna be safe on yours because I don't know what kind of furniture you have, what it's made of. So always with any kind of cleaner, test a little bit on you know a small area of the furniture that's not seen really well. Just make sure that it doesn't cause any damage to your specific furniture but this works really well on my wood furniture and it's non-toxic no harmful ingredients and all it is is one and a fourth cup of water three-fourths cup of white distilled vinegar and then two tablespoons of almond oil and then some essential oils i do 10 drops of lemon essential oil and five drops of cedar wood the lemon essential oil works really well for degreasing and making that wood shine the cedar wood oil i don't know of it having any kind of benefit benefits for the furniture, 
but I just love the smell of it in my furniture polish. I mean, it has that like woody kind of smell, so I think it works great on wood. And it just is a comforting and relaxing smell. So when I use this on my furniture, these essential oils, of course, they are diluted in the cleaner, but they still help the room smell good when you use them. And the furniture gets some benefits, and you get some benefit when you inhale them. So the cedar wood is nice and relaxing and then the lemon has benefits on the surface you're using it on. And it's also like uplifting, energizing oil when you inhale it. So that's all I do. I put those things in my spray bottle and shake it up before I use it. I mean, it doesn't have any kind of preservatives in it or chemicals to make it stay mixed up well. So anytime before you use it, always shake it up to blend, you know, the water and the vinegar and the oil and everything again. And this spray bottle, I love it. I got from Grove Collaborative. It's glass which helps to preserve the essential oils that are in it. To be honest with you, an amber glass bottle would be even better because the oils can oxidize with sunlight. So if you are using a glass bottle like this, just don't store it in sunlight. But I love how this one has that silicone base. So like when you set it down on the counter, it's not gonna shatter and spill all over the place. So I'm using my furniture polish to clean the table and the chairs now. And so I just spray some squirts of this all over on my table and go to town scrubbing it with my microfiber cloth. And like I said, we do art projects. We have the art cart right there. And so we do art projects at our dining room table here. And this table is pretty old. I'm sure you can tell it's not the most stylish table. It's been around in my family for a long time. This was the table that my parents had at my house. And like I sat at as a little girl growing up and my parents thankfully gave it to us. And so we definitely get a lot of use out of it. The boys do lots of art projects there and they do use placemats, but somehow they're still ends up always getting paint on the table. If there's any spots that have paint on them, I do, you know, squirt them with the furniture polish and then rub them and then kind of use my fingernails to get in there and scratch it off a little bit if I need to. But it worked really well and you can, I'm sure, see here how the cleaner is leaving the table nice and shiny. Put up with changes Come pick me up cause I just wanna see the light I wanna be weightless Teach me to fly, I won't be coming down Could somebody wake me up? I don't wanna be here and let the world pass me by So I did the same thing to clean the chairs Just sprayed them with my furniture polish and then rubbed them down with my microfiber cloth and made sure to get in all the little cracks and crevices. And then before I put the chairs back, I did kind of lift up each corner of the rug and swept under it as far as I could reach and got out all the dirt and sands and everything. And then I also mopped there under the rug and then I swept and vacuumed on the rug, top of the rug. Once the chairs were clean, I put them back on the rug where they go and then I'm sweeping again really well and then before I finish I'm also cleaning off the picture frames on the wall just with again my furniture polish dusting spray whatever you want to call it and I'm just putting a little bit on my microfiber cloth and wiping down those picture frames dusting them and making sure I'm hanging them back up nicely so that they are all nice and straight and then the last thing that I did which is not 
seen here, but I mopped the floors and I use the Shark Steam Mop. I love it because it uses steam to clean the floors and it doesn't use any kind of harsh chemicals. And that is it for my dining room deep cleaning and organization. I hope you guys liked this video and found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and come back next week for my next video. From my home to yours, see you next time. Bye. See the light.